Welcome to the Toronto Livings Podcast, a conversation about all things Toronto with a focus on real estate, the culture, and of course, the food. I'm Mark Savell. And I'm Joey Virgilio. And we're realtors with Sage Real Estate working together as a Toronto Livings team with a focus on helping you buy better, sell higher, and of course, having a little bit of fun along the way. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mark. Hello, Alex. What's up, guys? Ooh. Not selling condos today? What's going on? <laughs> we had to put it Falling on. Falling behind, man. <laughs> we put the, the sales on pause for the world's most, uh, the city's most influential it's podcast. Kind of went from world to city right away, man. <laughs> so disrespectful. We got to set the bar. Yeah. Introduce me, man. Come All on. right. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> so one of the goals with the podcast was I didn't want to only talk real estate. I kind of wanted to focus on some of the people making big things, big waves, big changes in the city. And we've been friends for a long time. A long time. I'm sure we'll get into that. We'll get into that and the origin story. But uh, you're part of the reason why we even have a podcast. Uh, Because during COVID times, you had the Stephen LeBron. Well, first of all, maybe we should just who we have here. (laughs) Before I get into the deep set. Alex Wong, a.k.a. Stephen LeBron. What other AKs do you have? Uh, That's it, man. A.k.a. (laughs) Prehistoric, uh, coming out October 24th. AKA Amazon bestseller. Oh, uh, but please go pre order it. Um, need more sales. AKA Mark Savell's longtime friend since I was wearing LRG t shirts. <laughs> AKA Joey takes creatine uh, <laughs> and other illegal substances. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, um, I'm a co host producer on, on the Raptor show at Sportsnet. Yeah. Um, shouts to Sportsnet, but I'm here today representing myself independently um, <laughs> for all the things that I'm about to say. And, you know, this yeah. This does not reflect the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freelance opinion. writer, cover the Raptors, um, all that stuff. New book, prehistoric, like I mentioned, coming out soon. So yeah, and it's a bit of bit of me. Yeah. And did I hear you got a book coming out? Is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. I believe it's uh, in front of the cameras right now. So well, it's not. Let's, let's lift it yeah, up. We're limited let's to lift the it space up. we have. Just we, yeah. you know, these are advanced copies. You know, Mark Savell, one of eight people in the world. Yes. <laughs> to to get one because he's a personal close friend. But yeah, I, I work in sports, and uh, Mark has helped me with my. Uh, you know, properties over the years. Yeah. Except when I was married and my ex-wife's sister was a real estate agent. <laughs> that, <laughs> cla- that caused a bit of conflict, but Those are the dark we days. move on. Yeah, we, we move on. Yeah, we move on. We move on. We've, what, we've known each other probably like 12 years. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like 2008, 2009 Eight. range when I was first yeah. uh, looking for my rental, my first rental in yeah. downtown. Yeah. I was living at home at the time with my parents in uh, Unionville. Yeah. So this was like a big move for me at the time. And I remember uh, someone that I work, I was working at Ernst and Young at the time. Yeah. And Teresa, Teresa Young. Teresa Young. That's right. Was um, working there as well and knew you. Yeah. And I was introduced to you and I remember meeting you for the first time. And it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know, like you have a perception of like real estate agents, you know, yeah. like they always try to upsell you, yeah. you know, they're wearing these like, I don't know, Z Zenya suits <laughs> um, and all this stuff. But like Mark was just like a regular dude. And I say that as like a compliment, like Thank not you. as something that was negative, right? Yeah. Like we're able to chat. And I think with real estate too, a lot of times like you, like as civilians like myself, like you don't really know a lot of things yeah. when it comes to like the nitty gritty, a lot of the stuff that you guys cover on the podcast. And I felt comfortable just like asking Mark just questions. Like I didn't feel dumb. Like I felt like he was there to always help. And I just thought we like built a good rapport. Damn. And what a testimonial. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, really the first time like we connected was like we were in the elevator. And like I mentioned, I was wearing an LRG shirt yeah. and you had pointed it out. Yeah. And like that just, you know, made me really happy. Yeah. yeah. I was so young in my career. I didn't know how to pull all the tricks of the trade yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Alex likes This guy so was much. printing fridge magnets. <laughs> yeah, I did have fridge magnets. I, had, I still have a Savelle in the city fridge magnet. <laughs> Any sex in the city producers listening out there, oh, sue God. him. I, Statue of limitations dude. on fridge magnets at least 25 years. I thought yeah. I was so slick with that ad. No, it was amazing. I think that's one of the things, to be honest, like that I was impressed with too. Like yeah. as someone who creates content, yeah. like in my space, I could tell like whether it was the branding, yeah. uh, the blog that you used to run, yeah. you know, you did YouTube series later on with my yeah. friend Ben, you know, reviewing uh, coffee around the city. And yeah. now, of course, this podcast, which everyone should subscribe to. Thank you. Um, Toronto Living's podcast. If you guys are listening. <laughs> Just for me, and <laughs> not for these two rookies. Um, <laughs> no, subscribe to their podcast. Like I, I try to tell tell people, like this is 
a podcast like we need more podcasts like this in the city of toronto yeah and the goal is like just to really highlight like i just came back from vacation and like i was mm. feeling pretty low being back in the city because i'm like mm. there's so much here i don't like about it but mm. i was like let's get alex on the podcast and kind of make things fun again because there are people making the city enjoyable and it's not just the everyday traffic jams that we often bitch and complain about like yeah. mm. you're doing some crazy good things here uh and what are those things you keep saying it but well, i think you got, got a i think you got a i think you got a book in the works something about a a raptors book or something no, we'll, get, I, we'll get into that we'll no i think yeah that. i think i have a really good point and you guys might got to buy a new phone cuz I, I think we're going longer than 45 minutes well, um that's so that's why we charged it up <laughs> yeah. but I, I think i think the thing is like it was crazy cuz like last night i was home i was watching uh, like Anthony Bourdain's like layover episode of Toronto. Like yeah. I was just, you know, and then I watched like Eddie Wong's like Wong's world mm -hmm. episode of Toronto. And like, like in the episode, like everybody that he Bourdain got on the show was just talking about Toronto and these like stereotypes mm -hmm. that we hear about all the time. Like, Oh, like people in Toronto get no respect mm -hmm. or like, Oh, like we're always, um, you know, trying to compare ourselves to like yeah, New York, New York, and mm -hmm. the LA's and stuff. Yeah. And I was actually kind of bothered that, like, that was like the perception that was being put out on like such a national show to yeah. like the world. Because I'm like, real people, like you know, you guys, like myself, like a lot of people in the city. I don't think we think like that. Like, I no. think we're aware of that stuff, but it's like, I think we appreciate Toronto for for what it is, Absolutely. and like we appreciate all the greatness. Um, that's in the city, whether it's the people, where the whether it's like restaurants, institutions, establishments, and we don't like have that like little brother type mentality. No, like like being great in Toronto is just the same as being great anywhere else. Thank and, you like, for I saying feel that. Like you should take pride yeah. in that. I, I hope more people carry that conversation because that is like the overall goal. Like I don't want to be New York little or Chicago mm -hmm. two point oh like. I want to be Toronto and right. New York and all the other cities. You could be like us in certain ways, but I never want to have to live in the shadow of another city that's already done it. Like, and I think we're finally getting enough talent coming in here and uh, you know, the, the wave's been moving so much forward that the next 10 years is going to be really interesting to see all the beautiful things that the city pushes out. And like, even if you think on a cultural level, like him or hate him, we got Justin Bieber, we got mm. Drake, we got The Weeknd, we got the billboards, like, uh, even on a pop level, but like so much of that, it makes me proud. I don't necessarily like all their music, but just be like, man, those guys are actually from this city. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that fantasy of like, oh, LA produces these type of great people. No, we've got it right here in our backyard. Yep. And next up, we've got Alex. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Number four on the billboards. Yeah, that's right. My, my, uh, my, uh, it's all a blur tour also coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Here's the thing. What we do on the podcast is mm. when we hit milestones, we pop confetti. Oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. I think I've seen this. Yeah. Joey, <laughs> Alex. What is, uh, what is this milestone that we're doing? Well, you're the first non-real estate person who's going to bring us like over a hundred streams on the show. Yes. So that's, I, I, that's, I can guarantee that. That's what that's we're celebrating. <laughs> we've we've, we've only that. cracked a hundred. How, do I, how do I even do this confetti thing? So we're going to count down three, two, one, yeah. and then you go left to right. Left to right. You turn to your left. Yeah. Turn to my left. Yeah. Turn, turn it to my way. left. There you yeah. go. Okay, okay. All right. So three, two, one. No, you gotta turn it. it. <laughs> no, shake turn it. it. Okay. <laughs> three, three, two, two one. one. Oh wow. Uh, oh, this is amazing. Like a video. Yeah, yours was a bust. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, my, man. I got the fail. That's amazing. <laughs> Man. All right. So we're going to have to clean this up this after. Is, this but, is why uh, I put Toronto <laughs> Living's podcast on my book promo tour. <laughs> <laughs> so pop confetti. Yeah. Let's get, get into that. So you wrote a book. When did you start this? This is what, what, how many books have you written so far? Uh, so technically, this is my third book. So the first book I wrote was a coffee table style book uh, called We the Champs right after the Raptors won their championship. But that was like a collection of like articles and profiles that um, I had already written uh, and I co-wrote that book with uh, my friend Sean Woodley. And then my next book was uh, Cover Story, yep. which was a, a deep dive into uh, iconic basketball magazine covers um, in the modern day era, which I had started working on at the beginning of like the pandemic uh, shutdown. We actually won that book. Oh, at that's, your live podcast. Oh, you won it? Oh, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Many people, uh, you know, are usually disappointed when that's the prize <laughs> that they win at events. For example, I was at a friend of the program, Joseph Cacharo, invited me to a, a stag 
um, last week. Um, was that your first day? Yeah, it was my first day. Awesome. Um, you know, won a couple hundred bucks at, at poker, and nice. as you, as you mentioned, go. donated half of it it's, it's just to, a, to the groom. You got to yeah. do wasn't that. wasn't very happy about that, if we're <laughs> being honest. But, uh, you know, whatever works. <laughs> got to follow the rules. Um, but, yeah, at the stag, too, um, there was uh, – I, I donated my, my books. <laughs> to, so, you know, you've got, like, a whatever – huge tv like yeah. a lawnmower thing <laughs> barbecue yeah like all the essentials so then you guys know it's like they they you put the raffle tickets into the little boxes right yeah, you yeah. choose which prize you want so when we're sitting at the table eating dinner i was like guys i'm gonna buy uh 80 bucks worth of raffle tickets <laughs> and put it all in my book so <laughs> it doesn't look empty and then the first ticket i'm gonna put for a signed mitch marner jersey the last one i'll put on an austin matthews signed jersey nice maybe as good karma i'm gonna win obviously i didn't win anything i didn't even win my own book <laughs> uh, but yeah anyways yeah so cover story was that and then prehistoric uh you know i spent the last i want to say like two years working on this nice. um interviewing people from the first year of the Toronto Raptors. So the premise of it is, is it's the origin story of the Toronto Raptors. It really tells a story of how the Raptors came to be as a franchise and from all different angles in terms of, you know, how the name and logo was selected, the first season ticket drive, mm. um, expansion draft, NBA draft, um, how the first broadcast team was put together, how the first dance pack team was put together. How did the players um, come to, you know, learn about Toronto mm. and, and some inside um, information and like stories from like the first year of the team. So I was able to talk to 12 players who played on that first year team. Uh, Damon Stoudemire, the star point guard, provided the forward for this book. Um, and together there's about 140 interviews that was wow. done mm. for this project. And to me, it's actually the most like, you know, personal project for me to, yeah. to kind of go back and tell the stories of, of these people. So hoping for like, you know, day one fans, I think we'll we'll get a kick out of this. And I think it's important for new Raptors fans too, especially after they won the championship to find out more mm -hmm. and learn about the history of the team. Cause like, you know, you can talk about like sports, you know, music, pop culture and stuff. You know, a lot of things when generations pass, it kind of just passes you by, right? Yeah. Like you think about, I don't know, like older bands, you know, older musicians, it's like, how much do kids today know about the history right. mm -hmm. of like, you know, a Bruce Springsteen, a Bob Dylan, you know, I'm trying to cater to your demographic. Right now. <laughs> chili peppers. Yeah, chili peppers, you know, whatever. Joey's a big Blink-182 fan. Yeah, there right. we go. Okay. It, yeah, Blink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, um, like, I, it's come off on this podcast as if I'm like Blink-182's number one fan. <laughs> it's so not the case. <laughs> Okay, you're number two, is, though. <laughs> is one of the Blink-182 members, is, is his name like Tom DeLong? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's alien a, guy. He's, he's the alien a, guy. Yes, he yeah. is a UFO uh, truther. That's yeah. how I learned about it. I think yeah. he wrote, actually, I think I read his book. Oh, really? Yeah, he wrote a book or he co-wrote it with somebody. Yeah. Okay. About UFOs. Because, like, I'm huge into, like, UFOs as well. Same. It's yeah. a whole thing right now. Yeah. Like, especially right now. It's all, mm -hmm. like, oh, there's videos everywhere. Yeah. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if anybody's been following it, but uh, oh, heavenly, like religiously, they oh, just okay. had like a congressional hearing. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I, th I think a few weeks ago. Yeah, right? that's right. I yeah. started watching a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a UFO believer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's what's a like, what's a pre-construction looking like? You know, ten thousand light years away. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get you taking that towards the end where the market's going. Um, oh God. <laughs> yeah. That that was a wild uh, turn of events. How we got into Blink One Eighty Two and now UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you're with a pro. Yeah, that's right. But anyways, yeah, the book is coming out October 24th. Really excited. I'm going to have a couple of book launch events. Uh, I'm going to have one at the University of Toronto. Um, you know, I'm we'll be there. Alumni there, October 26th. A lot of special stuff happening there. So, um, Wait, yeah, did you save go the date. Yeah, I went to UT Scarborough. Okay. Um, so I actually went there because I couldn't get uh, into Waterloo. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do enough extracurricular activities um, in OAC. But no, I went there to study uh, business. Okay. I got my Bachelor of Business Administration there and then uh, became a CPA. Yeah. Uh, worked at Ernst & Young coming out of school. Yeah. Worked in accounting for about eight years. And then at my last job, um, there was like a, um, there was a merger and then my role got eliminated. I got laid off. Mm. Um, and to me, that was like a blessing in disguise looking back. Like um, I was married at the time. So my ex-wife and I moved to New York. Yeah. And that's when I left my career behind mm. and, and became a sports writer. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So what's wild about that transition is that like you never went to school for anything journalism related. Yes, like I really like sports growing up. Um, I always love um, just English classes, like in terms of just like writing essays、mm. and just like things like that. So writing and sports were two things I was, I was I was like really into. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. Like I didn't get any formal education, but I think I just read a lot growing up. Yeah, and I thought about sports a lot growing up. And for me, it was just like putting in the hours when I actually became like a freelance writer,、yeah. like learning how to tell a story, learning how to like interview athletes. And and things like that. So a lot of stuff. I don't know if it's the same in real estate.、Um, I know I'm sure there's like courses. Obviously, things you got to do, get your license. But for me, a lot of this industry is like self-taught, like self-taught, putting yourself out there and, and just learning how to do it. But I don't. I think you've excelled in that. I don't think many others have been able to succeed in that sense. Like what's so amazing about you? What I, what I always admire about you is that like you just figured it out. Yeah,、and、I like, mean, a lot of guys do the four years of journalism school and all that other stuff, which is fine. Sure, yeah. But like, I'm gonna share a story. When you came back from New York,、mm-hmm. uh, Hotel Ocho. Oh yeah, that's you, right. You decided to have a coming home party for yourself. I did. Yeah, that was very <laughs> egotistical of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't have a close enough friend that's willing to do this for me, so I'll do this myself. So you threw your own coming home party. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, listen to I'm coming home like nonstop, you know, in the weekly. <laughs> and that in itself was like, man, I respect this guy. He's having his own homecoming. Yeah,、party. you know, looking back, kind of embarrassing, you know, kind of cringe at that, but yes, that doesn't matter. So you did it. Yes, and,、so uh, I did, the, did the event. Yeah. yeah, I remember talking to you. We we're at Hotel Ocho.、Mm-hmm. By The bar there, and I'm like, so like, you have a mortgage, man. <laughs> What are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, as a realtor, I'm always looking out for my client's best interest. I don't want you going to foreclosure or anything like that. And you looked at me dead straight, and you're like, I'm gonna write about the Raptors. And I'm like, yeah, but you got a mortgage to pay. Like, that's good as a passion project. But dude, I specifically remember you had this conviction in your eyes, like, no, like I'm gonna make it writing about the Raptors. Yeah, you know, I think. I mean, I think at that point in my career, when I came back in like 2016. You know, I had to establish myself in in New York, and、okay. I made a lot of connections. But yeah, I mean, I, I just think, you know, you talk about like maybe other people in the same position not being able to like figure it out. I really do think like my business background and like、mm-hmm. working in a corporate environment like helped me a lot too in terms、mm-hmm. of just like knowing how to build relationships、um, and also like thinking about just like、um, taking care of myself like financially. Because、mm-hmm. I think one of the things that I think、um, you know in our industry that's very common is like. You're expected to come in and maybe like work for free or、mm. work for not a lot of money. It's good for your experience and stuff. And like,、yep. I've never <clears throat> settled for that stuff.、Yeah. You know, to me, it's like it's just as important to me to to get a good paycheck as it is to to create something,、mm-hmm. create content that I believe in. So、mm-hmm. I've always fought for,、um, you know, making as much money as I can in this industry,、mm-hmm. even if it's like about having uncomfortable conversations, even if it's about passing on projects that are not worthwhile to me.、Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that aspect of it has has really helped me too, because like, like I didn't come into this industry like coming from accounting where I was making pretty good money for,、uh, especially where I was at my age and in my career.、Mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to come to do this just to like fulfill a passion. Like the passion was. Important to me, but it's also important to me, like you said. Like I have things that I need to take care of、yeah. in my life. So like I've always pushed for that, especially tell other people too, like younger writers that come in. It's like knowing your self worth, yeah, and like knowing how to like position yourself so you're not doing this just for passion and like、mm. struggling, right? Yeah, like we all have bills to pay. Yeah, you know, not everybody owns property, like things like that, but like everybody has financial responsibility.、Absolutely. So like.、Yeah. That part is very important to me too. Like I'm not doing this just for fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like get paid. you know, like yeah, yeah, like get paid and get paid well. You know what I mean? And、yeah. there's a lot of parallels with real estate. Is like I、mm-hmm. tell Joey, like we do a lot of stuff for free before because we're not salaried. It's purely、mm-hmm. commission based. But you know, we always talk about there's got to be a fine line of how much you give out versus、mm-hmm. you know at some point it's not a charity you're running and you do you we try to help our clients to the fullest, but you can't it just can't be a passion project. You got to show up and do the work and as an end result you get paid right.、Mm-hmm. So but. Um, the other thing I like about you is like you're always there for people who want advice in this industry. And、mm-hmm. like what I find so amazing is what it's been like eight years. You went from coming to the city again, okay, you lived here, but you kind of got a restart to now you're a producer of a show on TV.、Mm-hmm. Like some people go their whole lives and not achieve、yeah. that. You've done this in like under five. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. When you put it that way, because like it's wild when you think yeah, about it. Yeah, you know? I think it's like I don't know if you guys like this too in your career, because I'm sure day to day there's a lot that you guys are just like honed in on. Like you don't, I don't get a lot of opportunities to like sit back、yeah. and like think about it.、Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like when you guys accomplish something big, 
I'm sure the mindset is like, oh, let's, what's next? Yeah, you know, yeah. what's next? Like, I can't, I can't just rest on like my laurels yeah. type, type mm -hmm. vibe, right? And like, it's the same thing for me, man. Like this industry, like you guys mentioned, it's very competitive. Yeah. Um, and you can't ever feel comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've seen, I've seen the industry change a lot where there's constantly like layoffs and things like that. And like, even now I'm in a blessed position. I always operate in a way where like, I don't know, like, I don't know where mm -hmm. I'm going to be in like a month, two months, three months and stuff. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's been through like a lot of hard work. Like I always got to give myself credit because mm -hmm. I think, you know, we're always first to give credit to like external factors. Mm -hmm like luck, like connections, people that you know, being in the right place at the right time, all of st that stuff is true. But like, I've, I've worked very hard to be in this position. Mm -hmm. And I've like, I've worked hard to like hone my craft, whether it's like as a writer, as a podcaster, as a media personality, like whatever you want to call it. I think, you know, myself and Will, you know, we do the show together, the Raptor show, like, I think people, um, you know, gravitate towards us because they can just feel the genuine like passion yeah. that yeah. we have about it. Right. So that's important to me. Yeah, and you guys, what's refreshing about you, like I've told you this off offline, but like I'll say it on the, on camera, like what's so unique about the way you guys report about the Raptors is it's relatable as a fan. Mm -hmm. it, I don't feel like I'm listening to a broadcaster or a sportscaster or a journalist yep. tell me what I need to know. I feel like I'm sitting at a bar with a bunch of guys who are telling me like we're just talking the talk. And that's like one special like secret sauce that I think you guys bring to the table. You and Will's chemistry is so natural, but just your ability to make a Raptors fan out of anyone. Like my dad's a Raptors fan, partially because of you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> my that's, dad's a, a, a born and raised hockey guy. Yeah. That's like incredible to hear. Yeah. And like that for me is like so fulfilling. It's like, I remember the, a uh, couple weeks ago, I like dropped off, uh, dropped my nephew off back at my sister's place. Yeah. And she was at her next door neighbor's house, just hanging out cause, cause they're, they're friends. And so I went into the house and she was like, oh, you have to meet this guy. And it was the, it was the neighbors, like one of, one of her family members mm -hmm. who like is a regular listener of the show. And my sister was telling her like, yeah, my, she was, uh, my sister was, they were like, oh, what does your brother do? And they were like, oh yeah, he like works at Sportsnet, does a show. And they're like, wow, your brother's Alex Wong? <laughs> and then we like took photos, we talked about the team. And it's like, for me, it's like, it's not about the recognition or, or the fame or the clout or whatever people mm -hmm. maybe from far away see. It's yeah. like the personal connection feels so special, right? And I try to express to these people when I meet them, I'm like, you don't understand like how much this interaction means to me right Gives you yeah few people like at in any walk of life get to like and we're and like you know, listen like we're huge in the city i think we're huge in the raptors community but like it's still a kind of like a subculture right yeah. like a small subculture so i'm not saying we're like full-blown stars or anything but like few people get to be in this position where you're actually like influencing and impacting the way people look at a sports team right or engage with a sports team and to me it's like it's both a responsibility but also just such a joy to have those personal connections. Yeah. And I think you guys also are a voice for many people that have been overlooked or not considered as fans. You know, mm -hmm. you guys speak to like, you're heavy in the Asian community, but you don't just like, you go to, you go to Stags, man. You support the Italian team <laughs> as well, right? I no, mean, like, Joe Cash paid for my ticket, so that made it a little easier to donate back to the groom. Yeah. Can't lie. Yeah. No, but like so many times we've been out and like people will just randomly come up to you and be like, yo, you're Alex. And like, I always find mm -hmm. that so admirable about how you don't let that get to you. you you'll, you ignore me to talk to these fans of yours, which I mean, I'm cool with. But it's I mean, the thing is, like, even before like people recognized us or whatever, like I always thought I was a big deal, so nothing uh, yeah. has changed. <laughs> <laughs> so for people, it's like if you have an outsized ego to begin with, yeah, uh, that's a good start. That's my my first career advice to people. But yeah. listen, man, like I think part of being humble too. I don't know, like I think part of that is like the the immigrant mentality too. To yeah. be honest, because it's like. You see, like, I see how my parents, like, work so hard to, like, create a life for themselves mm -hmm. and then come here and create a life for us, like, mm -hmm. made us feel so comfortable growing up, um, you know, financially taking care of us in every way. It's like you never want to take any of this stuff, like, for granted. For granted. Yeah. And you see how hard your parents work, like, my parents work, um, and you want to, like, reciprocate that um, for yourself, too, mm -hmm. right, in your own life. So I think a lot of those values are, are like, trickle down from, mm -hmm. like, your family. Now, speaking about humbleness, you have um, a food item and a drink named after you. Oh, yeah. So yeah. like we Tell recently worked, <laughs> we recently worked with the uh, good friends at Hong Sheng, yeah. uh, you know, one of my favorite restaurants downtown. Um, Colin and the team 
had approached us because they're trying to do more things in the community. Um, and they had this idea to do uh, shake shake fries with their mm. new ginger scallion seasoning. Um, basically, it's very popular in Asia to like get a bag of fries from like a McDonald's and then throw the seasoning in there, shake it up a little bit, kind of give you, it a new flavor. Do you get your own seasoning? Like, is that the trend? So, yeah. So the seasoning usually comes with oh. like, so it's kind of like, you know, at CNE, they like just deep fry everything. Like, yeah. like in Asia, like, I guess this is like a variation of like a cool snack trend that like happens. So he wanted to work with, with Will and I. Um, so we were able to get, um, you know, my friend Sloan, um, artist Drake Serial to do a cool illustration of us, like a logo for the Shake Shake Fries. Mm -hmm. And then we had an event there, um, which was super cool. Um, and then, then they created a drinks menu as well, because yeah. Hong Shing has a really cool, uh, you know, drinks menu there, super cool bartenders there. And they asked us to like choose names for, for the drinks. And one of the running jokes on the show is, you know, anytime we talk about, you know, finances and money, you know, we bring up Mark Savell, yeah. you know, always, but <laughs> I always reference my generational wealth um, <laughs> for how I just get by in life um, the way that I do. So, yeah, we named one of the drinks generational wealth, um, <laughs> which was amazing. And yeah. it was delicious. It was. It yeah, was yeah. I mean, the, the name has absolutely nothing to do with the ingredients <laughs> of the drink. I mean, it could have been a Negroni for all I care, but <laughs> I guess you just assign a name to it. But that that's the other part, too. You know, I know Joey and, and Mark, like you guys have, you know, attended like some of our live events yeah. um, that, that Will and I have hosted and like seeing these different things around the city. It's like um, just the organic growth and the organic relationships you build in the community. Mm -hmm. That stuff is so important, too, because mm -hmm. like you make these connections, you're able to do super cool things. And then behind the scenes, like you're able to really connect people mm -hmm. from like the restaurant industry um, to like, you know, retailers around the city to, to what we do. So like that's all that stuff is very like that's that again is like the reward of like what what we do. Yeah, and we've attended uh, several of the events you guys have done. We'll always be a supporter and plug it because like they're fun events. Like, yeah, Joey, you're not a big sports guy. I was going to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like one of the biggest things is I know nothing about basketball. Yeah. 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 So like I, I'm everything. This guy just works me. out. Yeah. <laughs> he just, he's just at the gym and then he turns off all the TVs. He's like, why is there a basketball game on? Puts on his Blink-182. He's yeah. just so insane. <laughs> we built a character yeah, but go on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I mentioned, uh, I've mentioned to Mark a bunch, which is like, I, I don't, uh, I don't know it, but mm. being at that live event, I was like, I was so entertained through, through top to bottom. Like I, yeah. my focus was completely invested in, mm. uh, and you're, you're, you're like, back to the, the natural uh, banter that you and, uh, will have, it's yeah, like, yeah. it really comes across even for, even for non-basketball. Yeah. Fans. Yeah. 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 I love that. And like, I did get feedback from like several people there who might've been just like invited there by like friends that. You know, they they just like listening to to kind of just like good banter, good conversations and yeah, stuff, right? Because yeah. like, yeah, at the end of the day, like podcasts, all this stuff, like what you guys do, like what we do, I think there is a through line. Like it's um, it's just people want to hear like good conversation. Yeah, yeah. good conversation. And, yeah. yeah, and that's it's as simple as that, but it's also as hard as that. Like sometimes it's mm -hmm. hard to really put together a good uh, flow of it all. Like, but you guys got it. Um, but back to the food, like. Aside from Hung Shing, is there any other top spots in the city you think the listeners need yeah, to try? Yeah, so that's why I asked you for a rundown because I'm usually terrible <laughs> with remembering food spots that I go to because like friends usually just invite me to places. Um, so, you know, one of the places you you recommended to me in Little Italy, Sicilian Sidewalk Cafe. Super Mario. <laughs> has a great sandwich there. Yeah. Although uh, I am more comfortable when I go with you. Uh, <laughs> so I just want to say that. Um, I mean, downtown, like I love getting a slice at Fresca, okay. uh, Fresca on college. Um, you know, it's a Asian run uh, really? business. Yeah. Their yeah. margarita slice is really good. So I think they got featured somewhere cause now there's like 15 minute lineups wow. to get a slice. But, um, I know there's more popular like pizza spots in the city, but Fresca is a favorite, um, Hong Kong bistro cafe. They serve like Hong Kong style, like breakfast and lunch foods nice. on Dundas. I really like, um, Chinese barbecue Hong fat is my favorite. Okay. Um, that's also downtown. And then in Scarborough, my favorite Hakka spot right now is called Wong's. <laughs> um, it's in this small little plaza, but like, I love going there. Chicken King is a really good spot there too. Big trio noodles, uh, for anybody who wants like Wong Tong noodles. There's like a few locations in the city. Uh, Sam Wu barbecue is another great Sam place. Wu, yeah. I always recommend in Markham, just go to the first Markham food court. Yeah. Um, I think the first Markham food court is really good. And then across from first Markham, there's a really popular, 
a spot now called Cafe to Hong Kong. Okay. So you actually have to go online and like put in a reservation because the waits are usually two to three hours. Wow. Um, is it worth it? Yes. They okay. also, it's like a traditional like Hong Kong type um, cafe. So you get like snacks, um, like different, like small plates that you can get. Nice. Um, but they only open from like noon to six, I want to say. Oh, so I they don't that. open in the evening, no, I like which that is why there's such a rush, like in the afternoon. I like that elitist for, level like, operations. Of yeah. Business. It's like, we're only open for six yeah, hours. Yeah. I love that. And then Hong Sheng, obviously <laughs> yeah. pie, um, you know, Patois, those are big for me. Um, Kanji queen, yeah. Uh, is is one of my mom's favorites. Um, Imanishi is a place. Um, I don't know if you've been. We should no. go. Um, yeah, it's a Japanese um, kind of izakaya style. Okay. You you will really enjoy it. It's high end. Um, their food is really expensive. It's all paid so it's right it. in your so it's right in your yeah. zone. Um, yeah, we have this running joke. Alex, it's has not a the... joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have this great relationship where. Alex takes me out and I pay for it. But, it's it's you know. amazing. It's gonna pay off in twenty five years when I finally. <laughs> Sell my condo. Let and I got to shout out Logan's Corner to their momos in okay. uh, Parkdale is amazing. So yeah, I'm a lot Logan's of, Corner? Logos. Logos. Yeah, okay. Logos. So highly recommend it. We're going to so. put all those in the show notes. We're going to get... Joey yeah, yeah. You're going to send me that list. Yeah, yeah. I'll send yeah. you that list. Um, so Something I want to address if we're talking... Mm. If we're, since we're on the food topic. Yes. Uh, so on my drive to... Uh, on my drive here, I started listening to your last episode. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Uh, and there was, a, there was a comment made and you were, gonna, you were planning to ask Mark about uh, an Italian sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is right over my head. I don't know where this is going. I oh, feel like I'm being yeah. So Will recently went to uh, get an Italian sandwich okay. at, I believe, like a legitimate place. And when he brought it up, I was like, oh, did you go to Subway? Because um, <laughs> like my argument was like, you know, Subway, uh, you know, with cold cuts, yeah. um, like they also make a, you know, a variation of an Italian sandwich. <laughs> so would you consider, a, you know, a, a sub, an Italian salami sub from Subway like if I got that, can I say I got an Italian sandwich? Like, do you think that would be a the short fair answer is statement? is no? Okay, <laughs> okay, see, okay, okay. I could see how people would be like, "That's a married in cousin." Oh, okay, okay. You know, where it's like okay. you're still family, but in in right. inner circles, you're actually not family. <laughs> okay, you're yeah. like not at all. Um, you know, another restaurant I didn't mention. You know, Taverniti, um, yeah. which which Joe Cash, um, you know, has graciously brought me to. So we went last time, and then uh, we got a bunch of great dishes. I really like the arancini there. Okay, close enough. Yeah, yeah arancini. Um, and yeah, close <laughs> enough, yeah. We'll, we'll, we won't edit that out. <laughs> yeah, it's English, not my first language. Um, so the next day, I went to Loblaws. Okay. <laughs> and I also love the arancini. There. Oh, no. So I took a photo of myself at the Loblaws counter, <laughs> and I was like, hey, loved the dinner so much last night. I, I, I had to come back for more. Oh, God. And he was very upset at me. So why are why are people so upset where they get their Italian food? Yeah. Uh, I mean, so... <laughs> like, like for Chinese food, like I love authentic Chinese food, but I also love Manchu Wok. Okay. You know, to me, I embrace it all. But... Yeah. Mandarin? Yeah, I love Mandarin. That, okay. All right. Yeah, I love Mandarin. To me, I'm able to separate and understand that, you know, each of those types of Chinese food serves a different purpose, right? Like to make money off. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> well, are you offended that Subway and, and Loblaws, you know, are both cultural landmarks to me? I'm, I'm, as much as Taverniti. I'm yeah. most offended that Tim Horton sells espresso. Oh, <laughs> that's my okay. most offensive. Or like yeah. they have this whole panini line that's a joke. Yeah, you guys take your coffee like very seriously, obviously. Um, yeah. Do you think you guys are most snobby about coffee? Like, is that the one thing? Now, when you say you guys, you mean the Italian culture? Like, yeah, Italian? I would, you know, this is anti-Italian uh, discrimination. <laughs> Silvio Sopranos meme for anybody who knows that one. Oh, that's so good. You actually made a comment earlier, like, you're as good as your last laurels. And I was going to jump in and say the Tony Soprano line is you're as good as your last envelope. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, same yeah, same yeah. concept. Um, but to your point, yeah, I take my coffee very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a snob, definitely. Yeah. Uh, South of Bluer makes very bad coffee with the exception of Sicilian and a few other spots oh, okay. in the city. Yeah. Shows, uh, you know, I love my yeah. double-double from Tim Hortons. So. Oh, <laughs> sacrilegious, sacrilegious. <laughs> but you're, you're definitely like an honorable paisan, I would say. Uh, yeah, I try to be. Yeah. Um, I try to be. You know, I've watched The Sopranos five times, um, yeah. you know, recently yeah. rewatched it. And, you know, also uh, back from the trip for people watching from video, you know, I, I recently went to Seoul yeah. and, and Tokyo and brought Mark, uh, you know, a little gift. <laughs> so this is a Goodfellas uh, part uh, one of two, I believe. Yeah. VHS, uh, but it's in Korean. Yeah. Um, and and my, my Korean friend, when I post this, when I posted this, told me that the 
direct translation of the movie title in okay. Korean okay. is just good friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so the movie uh, has lost all its luster. Uh, That's amazing. It's like, yo, what's your favorite movie? Good, good friends. friends. <laughs> yeah. So the big problem was, so I traveled to Seoul first and then went to Tokyo. Yeah. So I bought this in Seoul. So I had this packed in my duffel bag. And then when I checked, when I uh, went into Seoul, I was actually pulled over by customs. <laughs> Because when they x-rayed this, they had found a VHS. And I guess one of the common things that happens is like people bootleg digital goods, oh. VHS and, and DVDs. Damn. So they searched through all my bag, um, you know, pulled this out. And I had to explain to them that I have, a, you know, an Italian friend, two <laughs> Italian friends, because there's two copies for this, one for you, one for Joe Cash. Love it. Um, and that made me seem more suspicious. <laughs> and it made me even seem more suspicious when I only was bringing in like two VHSs. <laughs> so anyways, the situation got resolved. Um, but you made yeah. it back. Safe yeah, I, I was I was pulled over briefly <laughs> for this. So. Well, I got to say thank you for this. This is truly like an incredible, incredible gift. Good friends or yes. good fellas, however you yes. identify with this movie, is mm. literally my top one of my top three movies of all time. Oh, I love that, and I've, it's you know as an honorary Pison, uh, it's also mine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've called myself. You remember Rachel Dolezal? No. <laughs> okay, so she was. <laughs> She was, um, I believe, I don't know what she did, but she was a white person who went viral because oh, she I pretended to be black. Yes. Like for her entire life. Yes. So I've called myself the Paisan Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> Done. Because it seems like I've been moving like an Italian my whole life. <laughs> That's an AK we're going to add to your Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that is definitely one of my AKAs. But yeah, no, I think just connecting with you, you know, getting to know Joey, you know, yeah. Joe Cash, like so many people... Um, you know, from the Italian community. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's just like, again, it's like different, all these different communities. Like we just have like, I think a common understanding. Yeah, noodles. Common understanding. <laughs> I was trying to get to a real point there <laughs> of just like how we approach life, like all the yeah. stuff that we've talked about. It's true. There's just a common understanding. There's definitely a, a lot of crossovers between the two cultures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Adriana, my wife is half Chinese mm -hmm. and her uncle always reminds me that they created spaghetti first <laughs> oh yeah this is like a heavy uh point of contention yeah, i feel yeah like. but yeah. you know there's there's definitely like i identify i work well with a lot of asian clients i have a lot of Asian. yeah because they have a lot of money yeah that's part of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely part of it but i think there's the fact that they choose to use me is something that i'm like very uh grateful for mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i think they see a lot of the hardworking elements that the two cultures have where it's yeah. just like I think it's some like long-term Canadians, but like there's that 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 feeling of like this guy's gonna work for me just as hard as an Asian guy would for me, and I yeah I appreciate that man. It's like a big compliment. But I think I'm ready to baptize you with an Italian name. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you, do you have it off off, off the, the top, top of your head just, right now? It just came to me right now. I don't know okay. if it's the fact that Joey's next yeah. to me in this big Italian energy because yeah, I, I go by Asian Roberto Baggio. Yeah. Uh, we got a better. I got a better. Oh, one okay. For you. Okay, okay, okay. Alessandro. Yeah. Juan Gilio. Wang Gilio. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I like his that. last name's Virgilio. Oh, so okay. you're Wang Gilio and Alex I like, Alessandro. Okay, I like that. Okay, that's hard. <laughs> that's good, no? Yeah. Off the top of my head. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to take that. Alessandro Wang Gilio. That's, that's going to be yeah. my name. We'll get you the spelling off air, but I also have some gifts. Oh, that I'd okay. Like to present yeah. my fellow podcasters wow. with. Uh, Joey, you're going to get the first gift. Oh, okay. oh. We ruined it last week, but this is going to be for episode 25. Oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought you back sardines. <laughs> Uh, they made oh it, man! They made it. The trip made it yeah, back. Minerva. It. Minerva. Limited edition. This the branding is amazing. <laughs> yeah, and, and like, I'm sure the sardines are good too. Um, my mother-in-law said they're okay. 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 Yeah, and she likes her sardines. Oh, they're only okay. They're only okay. Okay. Yeah, so. Your mother-in-law is a tough, tough critic. She though. is. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Ruby. And then yeah. Alex, because you went out of your way for me, I bought you. Oh yes. Yeah, I'm gonna act surprised as if you didn't show me this on <laughs> WhatsApp. Times. I was so excited. <laughs> I bought you a bootleg Portugal basketball jersey this is amazing man yeah and are these like i see these like symbols yeah here. is this like an lv type situation that's I, happening i'm not quite clear and yeah. i don't want to put myself because that's that that put it over the top for me yeah so i actually spent more on lettering it <laughs> yeah it. so it's a for for audio listeners you know it's a portugal green portugal basketball jersey yeah and he's customed it at the back with wong number 23 yeah and, you know, knowing Mark Savell's level of maturity, I'm really glad he didn't get me a 69 jersey. 
Because that, that was my first reaction. I was like, please get me something I can actually wear. I was going to get zero, so, zero for some reason. That would have been cool that too. Been but cool? no, 23 yeah. is a nice yeah. touch. So and wait, is 23 something specific? Um, Alex, you want to cover this one? <laughs> <laughs> wait, is, is there a specific meaning? Well, for Jordan. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Jordan. I thought there was something personal. No, no. Like a stupid joke that me and you have no, or, no. or something. No, no. Yeah. No, no, no the 23 man. is sick. This is like yeah. a basketball number, obviously yeah. a common basketball number. Like, I, I, am, I am going to rock this. I, um, please I'm do. very excited about this. Yeah. Um, you know, catch me wearing a Portugal jersey on my IG story next week. So the um, the FP is is called Forca Portugal. Oh, okay. It's the name of the store. It's like no, this is like you know, I'm as as you can tell by my by my audio wavelength. Like I'm very monotone, and uh, you know, since my divorce, I've been emotionally <laughs> blocked off. <laughs> Unable to express many emotions, but I am super grateful for this. My pleasure. No, I want I you to know this. And Thank you. you should tell people you also got a custom jersey, I believe, for yourself. Oh, did you I not? Did, I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> so Portugal, Portuguese soccer, I know nothing about, but I started drinking Superbock, which is the beer of Portugal. Mm. And I'm like, I just want a jersey that says Superbock on the back. <laughs> of course, the wife was like, do you really need this? I'm like, yes, because it's already over on my luggage uh, weight. <laughs> so like between the sardines and the jerseys, we're like stressing and stuff. So um, I ended up buying a, a jersey and I put Porto Poppy on the back. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. everywhere. I go, Did I you put sixty nine on the back? Uh, yeah. No, I put ten. Okay, that's, thank that's, God, yeah. thank God, <laughs> thank God. Yeah. Again, I am married. My wife does not let me do dumb shit anymore. Yeah. So um, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, no, that that didn't happen. Yeah. But um, but yeah, enjoy the jersey, man. No, I, I'm super appreciative. Yeah, um, you know, I yeah, I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, I let's, love you, bro. Let's, since we're on the sports topic, and and we I'm are, gonna, yeah. we're, gonna add, <laughs> we're gonna add real what? estate. Why are you lying to people? You know they've heard the the first forty minutes, right? I'm just trying to stretch Boy, it to what 60. kind of lie? <laughs> what's your okay, Joy? What's your guess on how many streams we're gonna get off this one? Oh, we're cracking a hundred. I damn hope so. <laughs> I, I will guarantee. I will beg people on IG. To, <laughs> okay, can to you, listen. Can you also? I'm a draw. I'm a draw. Can a you bit. beg them to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel? I'm at 986 subscribers. You have that many subscribers? Yeah. That's like. What do you mean? That? I mean, I wasn't familiar with your game. <laughs> well, I've got. Like, That's like very impressive. I've got four videos over 100,000 views. No, I'm like I'm not trying to like belittle yeah, your yeah. whole operation. You know, I respect you. Thank you. You know, I call you, you know, I call you the the real estate Jay-Z. Yeah, you do. Um, but like, <laughs> but man, yeah, no, I will definitely push the subscribers as well. Because if know. I get over a thousand. Yeah, if you guys are here, money. if you guys are still here listening right now um, to this episode, wh- how do they find the YouTube? Toronto Livings? Toronto Livings. Yeah. One okay. Word. Look up Toronto Livings. Just hit a subscribe and then just mute him. Yeah, um, that's it's, cool. it's all good. Yeah. So yeah, subscribe, subscribe to the podcast too, man. I, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is like, so we've kind of joked about this, but mm-hmm. uh, Scotty Barnes is promoting a condominium. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I deleted that email right away when okay. it was sent to me because so I just I. laughed. <laughs> um, so, you know, I could try to find it on, on my email, but yes, he's, he's working with a condo company project, uh, yeah. project on something specific yeah um I, yeah that one didn't hit for me I, I, look i wanted to poo poo all over the idea but here mm. i am asking you to promote my youtube so i can get four cents a video so i mean the concept isn't wild like i kind of get it like doug mm-hmm. flutie flakes and all that side business like as a professional sports player it's kind of weird when rookie of the year has to promote a toronto condo yeah this is what i've always said it's like um especially for athletes here in toronto i thought when fred van vliet was here he did a really smart job like doing uh, sponsorships yeah. like he worked with like i think like canada goose like uggs like did a lot of cool stuff but Canadian like Tire. yeah but like athletes need they need like a consultant in their life yeah. to tell them like what are the ads that will actually put you in a position better your brand yeah better yeah. your brand people look at you differently because like athletes have too many just like yes men in their lives yeah they Fairly. also just like <laughs> i i think i mean at the end of the day sometimes it's just getting a check right but right. it's like I don't know, like when, when, when these companies, you know, when, when the real estate company, I guess, like reached out or the PR agency to like tell a lot of people like me in the Raptor space about it, like there's just no excitement about yeah. this. Like what's, what's the natural connection here? Like yeah. what's the thing that gets people excited? I mean, the only thing I did was rush to tell you about it. Yeah, you did. I think on my vacation too, and I yeah. had to like give you a comment on it, which, uh, which I enjoyed. Yeah, you Absolutely. love talking to me on your vacation. Yeah, I do. We talk I daily. Do. I do. <laughs> yeah, the funniest thing was like I had this client that I hadn't heard from for the longest time. We were looking, and we didn't really, we didn't have much luck finding a place. Mm-hmm. And out of the blue, they're like, "Are you the Mark Savell that Alex Wong talks about on the podcast?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." Oh yes, we do love to shout you out. <laughs> so I appreciate um, all that. 
Yeah, so here's the email. Um, Scotty Barnes and Originate Developments and the Harlow Capital team were working together on on this project. And then, hey, Alex, following up once again <laughs> uh, about Scotty's involvement in a downtown Toronto development called Reside, Reside on Richmond. So that is the project. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah Pharrell has done one. With okay, yeah. a developer, Lenny yeah. Kravitz has, uh, Carl Lagerfeld has. Yeah. Uh, to me, I'm not going to a client being like, yo, if Scotty's promoting this, maybe we should invest your hard-earned money in it. It just doesn't right. translate. Right, I just yeah. don't understand the payoff to the collaboration. Yeah. Like, how is that supposed to raise either the condo's profile or the athlete's profile? Do, uh, Man. I'm a hater, though. It, it would be nice. Like, do they have a basketball court as an amenity? Like, yeah, you know, but it, many places have basketball courts, I, right? It, just something yeah. rather than it's <laughs> yeah. Scotty Barnes selling a project. So we're saying this is a brick. Yeah. I'm not telling my clients to invest in it. <laughs> okay. No, that's that's fair. I think I think we need to cover off the real estate you know, audience that you have. Thank you. For today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the I'm, takeaway okay. is stay away from... Uh, athlete driven condos athlete sponsored condos yeah i don't see the direct relation to success and in investing in just because they have a celebrity as part of it like mm -hmm. i'm not paying an extra 100 bucks a square foot because yeah they have and, and i think it just it. speaks to like people are smarter than that i would think people so are just smarter than that right like what's what's uh, i don't know maybe if you know because i'm sure there's a lot of thirsty people out there if you get like a meet and greet with scotty or something i don't know I would, I, it doesn't appeal to me. Does that, right. Yeah, that doesn't put it over the top. Like yeah. the thing with pre-construction is the whole mm -hmm. gimmick with it is they pay realtors four percent as opposed okay. to the two point five you get for a regular resale deal. Right. So that in itself is enough motivation for a realtor to go to his clients and be like, "Hey, buy this yeah. project." That's where I think a lot of people, um, unfortunately, are making their money. The real estate side of it is just trying to promote these pre-cons without mm -hmm. actually understanding, you know, the the risks that are associated with it, the actual quality you're getting at the end of it. Right. These are the important questions you should be asking. Um, and now to throw like a celebrity on top of it, it's just getting really distasteful. Yeah. That's kind of my, my gut. Yeah. And I think too, like in general, like seeing like, especially in Toronto, like seeing like athletes and people that are like involved in, in the sports space or yeah. like basketball space, just like how they get introduced to people in like real estate yeah. and like in investments, like in the city, it seems like one of those things where it's just really, I mean, across all industries, it's like who, you know, right. Yeah. Like people get introduced. I feel like they just get introduced to the same like three, four people. Yeah. And and like it's hard for like someone like yourself and like we can tell the story of you desperately trying yeah. to pursue Bobby Webster. Yeah, we can go there. Um, but it's like it's for, for other people who are doing great stuff, you know, in the real estate space, it's hard for them to like cross over and make those connections. Yeah. Because it's like a very insulated group of people that are like allowed to be like Is that part of that. Is that why you haven't given me any leads for professional athletes? <laughs> yeah, I know this is why the friendships, the friendships have been hanging on by a thread for over a decade because Mark's still waiting for it to pay off on his end. <laughs> well, you've set the bar pretty At this point, I'm a penny stock, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you did promise me Serge Ibaka would give us a shout out at our well, wedding. Well, you know, <laughs> that never happened. listen, the pandemic played a part. It did. The pandemic played a part. I mean, you had a beautiful wedding. Thank and you. To this day, I tell people, that was one of the happiest days of my life. <laughs> 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 Who has fireworks in the middle of, of a wedding and also a crazy ass robot? Oh yeah, we had yeah. a robot. That was yeah. just you splurging. Yeah. But you told me that was Adriana's idea or was that your idea? No, that was all mine. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I don't know. <laughs> she why. No one knew about the robot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was amazing too. Thank you. Yeah. But no, beautiful <laughs> wedding, you know, wonderful speeches, Thank you. you know, great food, great venue everything um i don't even know how do we get to talking about your wedding that you didn't bring serge ibaka as promised. oh yeah so i did promise mark because like i had worked with serge ibaka on his youtube series how hungry are you you know had a decent relationship with him and, and his manager that i was gonna at least have him like record like a voice message oh that's all i wanted i didn't want to physically something. come well you know <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like congrats to front of the program joe cash who recently got engaged yes, big time so uh, when i was at uh, the other stag we were talking about his stag okay and i was like yo i'm gonna get surge to sign something <laughs> for you and we're gonna put that up with the gifts so I would definitely... i've once again lied to my friend so. <laughs> no i'm gonna try to make it happen yeah. well you did get you do you have some pull you got um would you get to sign the card for andrea oh yeah so jeremy lynn jeremy lynn thank so you so jeremy lynn was in town for a charity basketball game 
uh, at the University of Toronto last summer, which I was uh, Will and I had the privilege of uh, calling the game as yeah. like play by play commentators. And so on the day of, I don't know how we talked, but I think I basically told you, I'm like, I'm gonna go see Jeremy Lin Get later. Like, do you, do you want anything signed? Yeah. And that's when um, you and um, Andrea. Andrea both uh, raced downtown yeah. to drop off uh, Jeremy Lin jersey yeah. and his grad photo, where he Andrea's was grad photo posing <laughs> in a Lin. Um, and jersey, then, yeah. and then, so at the at the celeb game, this suddenly became the most stressful thing for me because, like, <laughs> I really wanted to come through for you, and it's not like I have a personal relationship with Jeremy; like, he knows who I am. <laughs> But it's also awkward for me to be like, hey, can you sign these? <laughs> so to make it even more awkward, it was during a timeout in the game. <laughs> I walked over and I was like, hey, Jeremy, <laughs> like, can you please sign these? <laughs> Gave him a Sharpie. He's like so mad. <laughs> but he's like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so he signed it and it was done. So I was really happy to, to take care of that. Well, the backstory to that and the level of, of gratitude we have for you doing that is Andrea, a lifelong hockey fan, took out his Doug Gilmore jersey from the frame and replaced it with Jeremy Lin. Oh, wow. So you truly are the ambassador for basketball to Italians and white people. In Canada. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always try to make, um, you know, as much as I can with the connections and stuff, I try to make things happen. So a funny follow up story is like, they had the same charity game uh, just like a couple months ago, yes. this summer. Mm. And Jeremy was once again in town. So Jeremy Lin and Simu Liu were like the big stars. So coming off the high of getting Andrea that jersey, <laughs> I was telling every single person, if you have anything Jeremy Lin related, <laughs> I got you. So my friend Kai, who's a huge Raptors collector, gave me like an authentic Raptors like uh, Lin jersey. Like That's I think sick. game worn, I want to say. Damn to sign and then uh, my other friend Josie is a huge uh, Raptors fan also bought a Jeremy Lin jersey so I brought both of them to the game and this time I failed yeah you didn't sign it <laughs> no because this time there was more like security around <laughs> um like and I think I was a little bit hesitant to right. like there wasn't that like opening okay. where I felt like I could like barge my way in especially after like the last year's experience and then there was an after party too um at the combine on like wellington um and then he was upstairs like he was at his own like private party yeah so i also wasn't able to make that happen but then the the wildest thing so i felt terrible for my friends because like i was talking a huge game uh, <laughs> and then i failed but then afterwards uh jeremy followed me on instagram oh yeah so um i i haven't done the dm thing okay. yet yeah, you know yeah. i've been trying to be proper yeah, yeah. you know when someone like you know in porn follows you suddenly you're like yo should i be posting this on my stories right now i mean <laughs> should she, i be acting funny yeah <laughs> You're kind of the most important people that follows us, so I don't really have that. Yeah, problem. yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, so I'm playing the long game. Hopefully, Jeremy and I can build a relationship okay. to the point where I can just like bring him a truck full worth of merchandise Merch, to, yeah. to sign. Yeah. All right. So um, this is definitely a flawless episode without any hiccups so far. Yeah, I believe um, we just lost an hour worth of video. Yeah. So a question that it's been really pressing me is, who's your favorite... Um, basketball player you've ever interviewed oh man uh, haven't been hit with that question for five <laughs> minutes um so yeah I, I would say favorite is like a hard thing for me to to pick and yeah. to be honest it's one of those things where i feel like i've just had so many interactions yeah. with different people that like it's hard for me to like pick one but like for me it's like having Kawhi leonard and having inter here in toronto for that one season for the championship and having a, had a chance to to interact with him mm -hmm. was it's the most memorable for me just because like what he meant to the team to the city and obviously him with his like mysterious personality so like i worked uh on set on sergi baka's how hungry are you uh youtube series and there was one episode where they finally convinced Kawhi leonard to come in mm. and this had been like four months into the championship season and it it, it really took that long like serge and Kawhi <laughs> were like best friends on the team see each other every day practice games shoot arounds everything and it still took four months for them to convince him to come for one hour to film this and so there was a spot uh, on queen street there's a space uh which a chef owned uh so it was like a kitchen space which was rented off for Serge to film so Kawhi comes in but then like the problem is he gets out of his car and he's like lost like he's like <laughs> a block away from this so he calls Serge. he's like i can't find it 
So I was the one that was um, that had to go fetch him. <laughs> um, so so I went to grab him. Uh, I was like, "Hey, Kawhi." He's like, I, I'm, "I'm pretty sure he didn't even say anything back to me." <laughs> just acknowledge. He was like, "Just do your job." Yeah. <laughs> like we walk a block in silence. We're in the elevator in silence, and then the like door opens, and like I could tell Kawhi and Serge were like great friends. Yeah. Right away, because like Kawhi's like, yo, I'm gonna invoice you for this. <laughs> like he was like, yo, you can't afford me. <laughs> He's like, which is like just like hilarious, because like uh, any words that come out of Kawhi's mouth is like Comedic hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And then they were all joking around, and that was a famous episode where they had the beef penis pizza. Yeah. That was the food, and I, I'm proud to say that you know I, I was uh, honored to have tried the beef penis pizza. Thoughts? Uh, you know, like yeah, it was great. Like, like, <laughs> The crazy thing about working on that show on set is like they always try the crazy food and like it was never too crazy for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, like yeah, I'm fine eating like cow balls or whatever. Like they serve cow Lowry and stuff. So episode 25 for us, we're going to be doing like all these wild challenges. Joey's going to have the sardines. I'm going to have Tim Hortons mm. coffee. Is there anything you want to contribute to that episode? Yeah, this is a, this is a, I don't know. This is a tough one. I want you guys to have the arancini at Loblaws. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Add that to the list. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what? That's a bridge too far? <laughs> you Mike. sounded like you hate Tim Hortons. <laughs> like you're willing to go to Tim Hortons, but you're not willing to do that? All right, we're going to add it. That's, that's going to be the Wong, the Wong challenge will be the arancini balls from La Blas. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to microwave one each, them. One, one each. One each. Yeah. 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 No yeah. like splitting or whatever. Yeah, don't, don't, don't be cheap when you're supporting the big giant grocery chain. <laughs> <laughs> that is La Blas. But yeah, Kawhi was like super fun. Yeah. Um, I think it's always super fun just in general to your question to see how athletes are like behind the scenes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you see a different side to their personality and sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Do you want to share bad? Uh, I don't, I, I will not share bad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but like, I try to get you into that. Yeah, no, but it's like, I think in general, it's like when, when you're in a space like I am, like you're able to see so much of like the yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. It's really funny to see like, how athletes carry themselves publicly, mm -hmm. like the public perception of them mm. versus how they really are mm. like around people. Yeah. And sometimes you see the disconnect or sometimes you see that people are consistent mm. and you respect them for that. I, I feel like Fred's consistent. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people if you want to say like good, like yeah. Fred was consistently one of the best people to deal with. Like yeah. I met Fred and first interviewed him and talked to him when he was just an undrafted like kid. Yeah. Like he was trying to make the team. He was like the third string point guard. And even as he was getting more fame, won the championship, became like a $20 million a year player. Yeah. He was still the same. Mm. He was still the same. Like you could just go up to him and like have a conversation. And it was always like consistent. Um, he was honest with you. He was open. Mm. So, and different people kind of change over time, but yeah. like, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt too, because athletes have very different personalities mm -hmm. too, right? A lot of them don't want to be in the public spotlight. Yeah. A lot of them just want to play basketball. So mm -hmm. like, I don't blame them if they don't engage in it. Yeah. I never got that where we put so much emphasis on like, you know, what's your opinion on this political matter? Like mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. if they want to give it, let them give it, but don't force it out of someone. And Kawhi was amazing at just holding his ground and being like, oh, I just don't speak. That's my, thing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, my yeah. gig. I just no, don't. And I, and I think, I think too, it's like, I mean, I always like one of the bad things about like working in this industry mm. is like, I've lost like my fandom. Mm. Like I've lost like the mm. excitement of like, um, I mean, I still get excited when it's like a big game or like playoffs and things like that. But it's mm. like everything that you do, that's a passion when you're working on it, it just eventually becomes work. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like to me, I look at sports now and I look at the Raptors through the lens of just, it's, it's a job, mm. it's yeah. a job. Right. And it's like, Hey, listen, like that's the, I'm still crazy grateful to be doing this. Mm. Like I'm not complaining, but it's like, that is the one thing you lose when you like start working in sports. Yeah. It's like that, that adage of like, never meet your heroes. Yeah. 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 I had the same thing with uh, the music industry, uh. exact same mm. way. And you know, what's funny. I heard somebody say this once where once you start, if you do something you're very passionate about, once you start receiving that, um, uh, any type of compensation for it, mm -hmm. it that's when you yeah. kind of start to that's when that blurred line starts to get crossed yeah yeah no i think yeah so that's the one thing that i kind of lament okay but otherwise everything else is great yeah predictions for the raptors this year <sighs> i don't know i think it's gonna be a long season it's up um, 50 wins oh definitely under 50 okay. wins possibly <laughs> under 40 <laughs> okay in some scenarios possibly under 30 Ooh. 
So Will and I do this thing when they release the NBA schedule, all 82 games. Like we do this exercise on our podcast where we go through all 82 games and predict <laughs> predict the wins and the losses. Yeah, please subscribe to our show, yeah. <laughs> the Raptor show. But like, so we're planning on doing that again, like in September as an exercise on podcast, but I've been teasing. I've got them starting 0 and 11. Yeah. So wild thing about that 0 and 11 scares me a lot because uh, we yeah, like you should re- see Will's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm not even going to go there. He's like, why would you say that? <laughs> Cause he's like the biggest fan still. Yeah. yeah. So Joey, Will is like the most passionate Raptors person yeah, yeah, yeah. and so perfect for the job. Cause he's, yes. he is second biggest super fan. Right. The way I see it. Yeah. Maybe uh, I would say number one. He's number one. Yeah. <laughs> Unless um, Nat Batia as a client. Yeah, so. uh, no, he works with competition, I believe. Okay, then yeah. he's number two. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is it going with that? But uh, the schedule, yeah. Will's passion, them yeah. starting 0 and 11. Scary times, yeah. I'm not yeah. Really comfortable with that. I mean, I mean, you know, you guys were here when the Raptors won the championship. Yeah. And I think one of the great things about that year, 2019, was like how it just really touched people in the city like yeah. people who like even joey you talk about like not being into sports and stuff right like you couldn't help but be roped into the excitement absolutely it, right yeah. and it's like it's electrifying yeah it was electrifying and like it's hard to describe but legit there was just an energy in the city right yeah. like we've got a team in the nba finals competing for a championship yeah. right mm-hmm. now right and I'm sure, like, you know, you you and your, you know, your family members die hard, like, you know, actually Bruins, but like, you know, there's die hard Leafs fans and stuff that's been waiting for, for yeah. this moment Me. for a long time, My whole life. right? Yeah. yeah. And it's like to, to be able to see a version of that through the Raptors yeah. was like amazing. So it's, it's hard. It's hard when you go back to a sports team now, like with the Raptors that are clearly not in the championship, um, you know, contention bracket. And it's like, they're rebuilding. You're not sure where they're gonna go. So it's 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 tough when a when a team is like in that space. Yeah. There's just not that level of excitement. What? Well, there's definitely a level of excitement on Twitter for your predictions because there was actually like a Stan account created. Oh yeah. So uh, I was called Wong Stradamus. Yeah. yeah like, I thought that was you. No, come on, man. I, I know. Like I've you've established, I plan my own welcome home yeah. party, <laughs> and I definitely have an outsized ego and like you know opinion of myself, but like. Yeah, that was a listener of the show yeah. who like pulled all my predictions that I made and was tracking them throughout the season. Although the account went kind of quiet when the Raptors started struggling. So <laughs> I think he just like gave up gave on up. it. But I think for like the first 15 games, I want to say like I had guessed the wins and losses uh, correctly. Yeah. And people were like, wow, we should start taking his predictions and gambling on them. Because <laughs> if we had gambled on it, I think someone calculated we'd be up like $8,000 oh. right now and stuff. So another missed financial opportunity in the Wong household. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, it was it was super cool. So yeah, people, yeah, people take the content very seriously sometimes. Now, can you, is that convertible to the real estate market? Can you predict with the same accuracy where we're heading? Yeah, I believe uh, interest rates will continue to rise. Oh, <laughs> official? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, we're going to have to have a sit down with Olivia Chow. <laughs> <laughs> who I just see randomly biking on Dundas sometimes, yeah, which and also, trips me out. Uh, just for the listeners at home who might get worked up, because I posted a picture with Jagmeet Singh uh, like two weeks ago. Yeah, shout out to Jagmeet, man. Jagmeet always fighting the good fight. Dude, but. people lost their minds with me. I'm like, yeah. I, it's not that big of a deal. It needs a big deal though, man. No, no, he, that is, but like me yeah. taking a picture with him isn't. Like you don't need to get all Oh, because like he's just, he's yeah. there. He's there for the people. Yeah. And yeah. also Olivia Chow has no impact on mortgage rates. I want to make that clear. <laughs> yeah. In case people start like blaming well, her. Once again, uh, you know, I know absolutely nothing about real estate. Yeah, I just asked no. Mark. Yeah, that's why I'm here for you, bro. No, you're always here for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I gave you an autograph copy of my book and- you know, not to spoil the deep personal message that was in there. <laughs> I did thank you for always taking my calls whenever my mortgage is up for renewal. Well, yeah. it's not just mortgages. He also calls me for his accounting and his taxes, yeah. which I am not. I was like, the light bulb in my washroom is not working. Do you know a guy? Yeah. My dad's... He's like, go on Jiffy. Yeah. <laughs> my dad's garage door is not like, working. please be an adult. <laughs> Do you have Can a Can you be an adult for once? <laughs> yeah, so I have a very limited skill set. Um, I just know how to talk about sports. And write. And right, yeah, yeah. And well, that's I mean, it. that we'll, yeah. we'll see where we. Listen, about. we all have our, we all have our, you know, you skill know, sets. yeah, skill sets, good and the bad, good if, and the bad. If we had a like Scotty Barnes does to real estate, what would you suggest Joey and I do in sports? What what would our contribution be? Yeah, I think I think the two of you could be a great uh, like commentating, like play by play duel, because I right. think 
a lot of people that do commentating obviously in sports like know it really well and like you mentioned sometimes like talk down to or like yeah. talk to in a way i think it'd be really refreshing okay to have like two people who are like not like you know in it yeah mm. talk about sports from a different perspective okay yeah. challenge accepted mm -hmm. right? yeah. Yeah. yeah but get the aaron chini at uh Lob 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 <laughs> yeah metro is still on strike which is wild yeah yeah. Been straight for like a month. I've been to the one that's been on strike about three or four times. Oh. <laughs> uh, and not, yeah, I've walked all the way there. Like, it's still in. not yeah, in. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, do you, we're going to wrap this up, Charlie, but do you have any questions for us that you want? Any pressing, you know? Uh, no, I think we covered the interest rates. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I think I think that's good there. I guess my question for you guys is like, uh, you know, as, as two people, you guys like relatively new to like, you know, doing a podcast mm -hmm. and stuff um how, what have what what's what's been like you know the uh, learning thing for you like a learning experience for you like what have you guys learned as podcasters joey you want to mm -hmm. yeah uh it learned in a sense of uh i guess just in general yeah like anything that's like surprised you in terms of like having to like have the responsibility of like recording a podcast every week like what's jumped out at you like good or bad. I like the grind of it. I like yeah. systems and uh, like I look at it as this like we're creating um, an arena and what happens in the arena is the podcast, mm. but the foundation of the arena is us doing it every week. So mm. I like the structure of the fact that we get to pick on new topics. Like we went into blog TO. I'm going to do more of those attacking them because they're journalistic stuff is shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so unless, like, unless blog TO has a freelance assignment for me, then they're, <laughs> they're good people. I, I hear they don't pay. So I, oh, oh, okay. I, I know that yeah. automatically is just yeah. shows the Toronto life Been yeah. working with them on a few things. Yeah. So. Yeah. You did do a couple of yeah, 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 articles yeah. and stuff. I'm, I'm around. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, I enjoy just the ability to give our opinion right or wrong about the things we're seeing out there and kind of, uh, communicating, like kind of doing the play by play for what the real estate market, how it's yeah. performing. Yeah, it is. It is almost like commentating on what's happening. Yeah, uh, it's th the one thing that I do really like about it is the fact that you're you're constantly keeping yourself very up to date because right. you're every time you speak, you're on record. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the one thing. I mean, that was a terrible question by me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, but like, I think is a. I think that's the one thing is like when you're on a platform talking about whatever, it's like it puts the pressure on you to stay informed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like us keeping up with the with the Raptors and like making sure we're on top of things. Yeah. I feel like you guys want to deliver that to like your audience. So do you think it's strengthened your like friendship or work relationship, the two of you? Yeah. Have you guys, yeah. what have you learned about each other? Have you learned anything new about each other? Joey can eat an insane amount of food. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely one after thing. After he goes right. to the gym for six hours. Um, and then he'll go back to the gym for six hours after. Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand. For those not listening visually, this man basically like Italian Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the biggest about, compliment you I was going to say, that's a fantastic compliment. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, minus the political views. <laughs> is, is, and the one time he said the N-word. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was about to ask if he's problematic, but that is yeah, definitely... Yeah. Yeah. So just just from a physique standpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joey's physique is Hulk yeah. Hogan. Nine, 1980s too, by the way. Yeah. Not, not, not current Hulk Hogan. I'm yeah. working on them handlebars, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's going to be the new addition. Yeah, but like I, th I think that's the other thing. It's like... That's why I ask. It's like, yeah. Will and I do in pause. Like we've learned so much about each other, just like personally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely learned that Joey's got the attitude, like such a positive attitude that when I was starting in the business, I didn't necessarily have that same outlook. Mm. For me, it was like a lot of like anxious energy of trying to make it be successful. And I feel like you just, you come in with like good, happy energy to try to help people. Mm. Appreciate that. Uh, and that's something I've learned, like doing it for so long is like, maybe I never even had that or I forgot about that, but it's refreshing to have that like um, anything's possible approach to everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, compliment uh, me now. Yeah. I was about to. <laughs> I'm gonna do my turn here. Yeah. I might do a homecoming after this. <laughs> God damn it! I didn't, I didn't know my homecoming was getting roasted. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I will say for for uh, one of the biggest things I've I've been learning about Mark or continuously learning about Mark is that ideas man galore. Uh, constantly, mm, yeah. whenever we whenever we have these moments, uh, it, Mark is very big on um, like uh, self reflection. Mm. I think meditation and and yeah. that type of thing. That's I've, I've learned that a lot because like through this podcast process. It's been a lot of creativity yeah. and that really sparks, I mean, I noticed it really sparks like that, that idea in you uh, it, and it brings that like life excitement back. Yeah. Yeah. There's been many times when I want to quit real estate, not because it's hard, but because it was boring. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, there's nothing creative. And then like seeing you do your thing, I'm like, why? if Alex can literally create something out of nothing, what, what, how can I take inspiration from that and bring it to real estate and really just like have a commentary show of just talking about random stuff, places in the city, people that are doing cool stuff. 
And that's definitely excited me to like, we're doing a rebranding thing. We're re dropping a new blog, like a new layout for the blog. A lot of exciting stuff is coming. And that's just been like, you've brought in a refreshed version of what's possible in real estate. Nothing but love. Yeah, man. It's all love. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, where we're recording here, like I remember sitting in this room, like just talking to you, like we were brainstorming about your Legit, podcast. You were in the same Cause, spot. Because you wanted to, you know, just like kind of pick my brain, like yeah. chat about it and stuff. And I'm really... Uh, it's i'm really happy to see that this is like come to life yeah and like it's something that you guys enjoy doing and do like consistently yeah and we don't like you told me something like don't really focus on the numbers and we really yeah. we I don't mean, eventually yeah. focus on the numbers but <laughs> 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 the good thing is real estate pays well so even if this podcast flops like yeah it's okay but and i mean you know the the, the word flop and how you define it sure there's many different ways to to look at that right and i think that's why i told you it's like if the content is good and serving a particular audience and you guys are feel like you're getting something out of it, yeah. Like for real though, like the numbers, you know, they matter, but they it can be secondary. And that's the one surprising element is mm -hmm. that people listen to it. People listen yeah. to this podcast and like they're friends of ours and like they'll yeah. they'll throw me comments. I'm like, oh man, you actually listen to yeah. 58 minutes of yeah. this? No, I put this on, I put this on too. Like oh, this is it. this is in rotation for me. I so, appreciate it. Like I, I think I mean, part of it is just because I know you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I really enjoy the conversation on this pod. So if anyone is still listening, um, Thank you. You, should, <laughs> you should subscribe yeah. to the Toronto Living's podcast. And where can people find your content? Yeah, so uh, follow me on X. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow this is a bit i've been doing on uh on uh on our show like yeah. i keep calling it x because it's just so funny yeah <laughs> like, hey did you see my x the other day yeah. <laughs> hey man i was xing i was live oh, xing dude. that game um yeah catch me on x steven underscore lebron um god do i have to tell the origin story and then on ig at steven lebron um, subscribe to the raptor show with will Lou. catch us on sportsnet um during the season we're on sportsnet 360 2 to 3 p.m monday to friday also streaming on sportsnet's youtube channel and buy the damn book. <laughs> oh, yeah. Prehistoric in stores October 24th. You can pre-order now on Amazon and any other book sites. And if you want to, uh, you know, meet me and get your book signed, uh, just save the date October 26th. Nice. Uh, events happening at the Goring Center at the University of Toronto. I'll have more details soon. Is it going to be merch? Uh, yeah, probably. No event without uh, merch would, would take place All right. um, if I'm involved. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, it's 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 another homecoming that I'm organizing for myself. <laughs> yes. Cool. Well, thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. you guys, man. And this was super fun. Yeah. Do it again. We'll get Will out, you think? Yeah, or you he, deal with that yourself. He's yeah. going to Kawhi Leonard me out. He's going to invoice me for that. <laughs> Freaking Will. All right. Well, high five. High five. High what five. is this, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's something new. We're starting on the oh, show. Oh, God. Damn. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the Toronto Livings Real Estate Podcast. You could find more information on how we work over at torontolivingswithans.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get price reports from over 150 different neighborhoods in the city each and every month. If you got any value, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you made it this far, thanks for listening. <laughs>